Hey, go ahead. Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Frankie Slauson, and welcome to a special edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on YouTube. Uh, I finally got the man here, the legendary Terry Doolin. Well, <laughs> oh, you got the name right anyway. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I'm hoping I said it right, you know, yep. whether it be Doolin or Dullum or whatever, but I didn't say Doolin. I answer to a lot of things. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll, that's one of them. Uh, if you haven't seen his uh, Doolin file on his YouTube page, I'll put the link down below to his page. It's pretty freaking hilarious. You know? <laughs> Basically, because this guy, you know, it, it, it's not so much just but what you say sometimes, but it's the look that you give. You know, like when you're on the, when you look at the camera, you look so serious. Even after you say something funny, and you just give that serious look. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> but anyway, we're doing a special interview here for my birthday weekend episode. And uh, well, welcome. You know, thank you. I appreciate the fact that you let me do this because it's you're you're a celebrity around here. You know, I mean, you've been. Oh, very minor, <laughs> very minor celebrity. Well, I, I'm sure a lot of people know about you because you. How many people do you think uh, watch the news, watch your show, at five o'clock? Oh, I, I don't know the numbers, but uh, we do pretty well. You know, we, okay. we, we we've done the five o'clock now for fifteen years. Um, and, and you've been the host for that whole time. Been, okay, been. Oh, that's a lot of news. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been at the station for thirty-seven, yeah. so that's yeah. even a lot more. Uh -huh. so, uh, uh -huh. But yeah. But uh, uh, now that we've introduced you, uh, well, we tell us what what it is that you do, and you've been doing this for you said about thirty seven years. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you do? For Actually, a longer than that, it's closer to forty. Uh, uh, okay, I, I worked at a, a Bismarck television station for yeah, a couple yeah, of years. I remember you say that on your while you're and in college and in the army and stuff. It adds up to it. Long broadcast long a long time. You're like yeah. the Robert Williams of broadcast. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, so if, for people that don't know what an anchorman does, and I'd be surprised if there's nobody that knows, but what is it that you do? Well, it, at our station, it's, it's a little different uh, at major markets, I suppose, but at our station, I come in in the morning okay. and start working on the 5 o'clock newscast. Uh -huh. So it's my job, and I'm not only the anchor, but I'm also the producer of the show. Yeah, and the you, host. Yeah. Uh, the producer actually does uh, all of the writing of the show uh -huh. that's not done by the reporters. Okay. And what's not done, uh, or what is done by the reporters, I also edit. So yeah. I'll take their scripts uh, as soon as I can get them in the early part of the day, and I'll look them over, correct them for grammar and yeah, uh, I suppose whatever be, I suppose else. You got it. I suppose yeah, it. and and it's some, one of the things that, that nobody thinks of, perhaps. But yeah, you you have to and fact checking as well. That's that's really oh, okay. the important thing. If I if I question anything or I see anything that's wrong, uh, I go to the reporter and sort of challenge them and, and uh -huh. make sure that we all get it right. So how long does it normally take to produce a show for like to one episode? Well, it takes me, so, yeah. uh, you could say it takes me eight hours, okay. uh, because we start, you know, it's an eight-hour day, and yeah. basically, um, I start as soon as I get in, uh, sometimes just reading the papers, reading the internet, okay. and, and whatnot, and preparing myself for it. I suppose, every day, I suppose every day is like an interesting day, you don't know what you're going to, some stories you probably know what you're going to report, but sometimes these breaking news stories come out. And yeah. Yeah, and that's what most reporters like about the, the news business is they don't have to be doing the same thing day in, day out. Yeah. They, they know, particularly the reporters, they'll come in and they know that uh, they'll have something different mm -hmm. to do today than they had to do yesterday. And that's what most of us like about this. We're, we're kind of, we have uh, low attention spans, and we, we like to, <laughs> to <laughs> something new, I guess. Oh, yeah, I suppose. I mean, how, you know, we, we talk about the economy all the time, and it's like, it, it'd be nice to, to talk about something else other than the economy, because a lot of people say about the news, so negative <laughs> all the time. Like, the news reporters, like, they're always so negative with, like, talking about you know, the war or anything like that. Like, it doesn't seem like there's as many positive stories anymore, you know? Well, that's... Or is that just... No, I think you're right. Uh... We have to do the the stories yeah. that are most important to people. The economy is one of them. Yeah, and and a lot of the news, frankly, is negative, and it's it's yeah. it's not much fun for us either. Yeah. When I started at this station, I almost immediately. Grew
gravitated, though, to lighter news. I like feature stories. For almost 30 years, I, I got to do almost exclusively feature stories. Oh, okay. And, and that's what I liked about it. And one of the reasons was just that. <laughs> uh, it would lighten up a newscast, yeah. uh, feature stories do. Oh. And so my stories often would be the last story in the newscast. Yeah. And you like to sort of leave them with something lighter, something more positive. Sure. At least at the end of the show. Yeah. And that's what I like to do. Yeah, something more uplifting anyway. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Try to be more organized here a little bit. Uh, so let's uh, take a like. Have you tell your story? Like, like what was life like? You know, like in your childhood, where you grew up, and what was life like before you became an Anchorman at WDAZ? Well, that's a lot of questions, but <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for asking. Well, thank but, you. Uh, no, I, I grew up on a farm, uh, at least part of the time uh, when I was growing up. Uh, I'm from North Dakota. I'm from a small town in North Dakota. And it was it was in the uh, 60s. And life was pretty simple then. We didn't feel like it was, but it was, it was a pretty nice time to grow up. Uh, there wasn't, you know, constant worries about... Oh, what's going to happen to our jobs? You know, our, our parents were always gas constantly worried. We had yeah. uh, gas prices were thirty five cents a gallon, yeah. something like that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so life was was a little bit simpler. Yeah. And uh, but I had a nice childhood, and, and um, uh, I don't know what to tell you except that uh, one thing uh, that's almost unbelievable even to me is that I went uh, to a one room schoolhouse. Oh. Oh. Do you even know what I want? Yes, I do. Okay. We still, I'm from Greenbush, Minnesota, so all these little townships have their one school or one room school still. So. Yeah, but every class, you know, there, there's six yeah. classes in one room. Uh -huh. So you'd end up, you know, listening to all the lessons sure. and, and all of that yeah. and trying to concentrate on what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And it was terrible. I suppose, yeah. <laughs> I suppose. It's like, you know, everybody thinks very kindly and about one room schoolhouses, I don't. I thought that is the worst thing ever. I think invented. people think more like the little house on the prairie type of thing. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it ain't that. Well, I suppose it's different. And, and so you never once, I mean, did, did not in high school, you didn't go to high school or whatever? Oh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I went. But you're talking like when you were just a little kid or whatever. Well, in elementary school. That's, okay. That's where I went. Uh -huh. and then I, we moved into town and I went to sure. a regular high school. Yeah. I suppose it's very different compared to being in one room. Well, we had the, <laughs> we had the biggest class of all yeah. time. Okay. Uh, 54 was my graduate wow. class. The grade was for the class 2002. We had 30. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> hey, why not, you know? But, uh, so, w what made you want to become a, an anchorman or a reporter or just do the news completely? Um, I always thought that I would be in radio. Yeah. I always thought I'd end up being uh, programming a radio station. You have a good voice for it. Yeah. Well, that's just what I wanted to do. And, yeah. I, and I was interested in music, still am. Yep. Love music. And I thought, well, I will be a program director or something. Or stage manager, maybe? Or, or, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. eventually at a, at a radio station. Sure. And I did that for a while, and then somebody offered me a job in television. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to do that or not. But I did. Were you kind of shy, kind of just being on... Um, TV or kind of, uh, but I just, I, I always thought I'd do radio primarily and maybe do something in television okay. as a, you know, yeah. second job or something like that. Do you that. have any heroes, like people you looked up to, that were DJs and stuff like that, or radio or TV people that you looked up to? Oh, yeah, all of those yeah. things, I guess. Um, yeah, there were radio guys that I enjoyed listening like to. Like Wolfman Jack, that's my hero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, mine were on WLS and KOMA. And oh, uh, WLS is in, is in Chicago. Okay, and they okay. Were, they were 50,000 watt radio stations. Uh -huh. Usually you could only hear them at night. Yeah, that's after good. dark. AM stations, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, you, you're an FM. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> it's just, you know. I, I do know a lot about old school things. It's just that uh, you know I'm only 28 years old, so my my father taught me a lot about what life was like before the digital age and everything. So yeah, he got there was me, one. There was he, one. Got, he got me into Buddy Holly and all that stuff. Oh, so, you know, <laughs> Buddy, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that one poster that or a picture that you have of him or while well, you're doing pile episodes for both 
talk about that. Oh. Uh, the, the picture of Buddy Holly, anyway. Uh, but so you so you just wanted to do radio, and then you and somebody offered you a job. In yeah, and then I got into television and uh, television news, okay. and um, uh, I I just uh, stayed in it. I mean, uh, yeah. that's all. Like I say, I, I really enjoyed doing feature stories. Yeah. And uh, that led to the Doolum file after a few decades. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and that's what I like doing is, okay. is uh, people stories and uh, entertainment stories. Sure. Uh, and so that's what I got to do mostly. Then we had uh, a big flood here. Maybe yeah. It was in all the papers. Maybe you heard about well, yeah. Yeah, the 1997 flood. And, yeah. and so I, I did a lot of... Um, work on the air, on camera, during that time. Our main anchor man got sick uh -huh. and couldn't talk, uh -huh. laryngitis, and so I had to fill in for him, like yep. it or not. Yep. And um, so I did that for, for several weeks, and, and as it happened, they were planning on putting on a 5 o'clock news show that about that same time. Sure. And in that, in October of that year, that's what we so you had a lot to you had a lot on your plate anyway. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Did the right. flood affect the building at all? This building at all? Or? Uh, no, not very much. I mean, we we lost uh, water and power for a while. But okay. We, we sandbagged around it. But it was all right though. You pretty yeah. safe. We never had to leave here. Okay. We had another little television station actually built at Honeyford, North Dakota. Oh. Okay. And a grain elevator. Oh wow! Thinking that this building would be lost, and we uh -huh. have to go on the air temporarily at that time. Wow. We used it, but we the, we were always. So what would have happened if the, if the flood would have came and really affected this place? Where would you have been able to broadcast? I mean, besides that place, but when things got back to normal, would you have still had a broadcast from that place? Then? Uh, well, we couldn't have stayed there for long because okay. it was a grain elevator, and they no. But I mean, like, what would have happened if if. Uh, like, okay, this building was completely destroyed because of the flood. Where would you broadcast? Where would you be able to keep the, doing the news? And all I don't that? know. Uh, that, okay. That's a very good question. We'd, we'd probably have to have had temporary okay. uh, building somewhere while they're building a new I station. I suppose it wouldn't take that long for them to build a new new place, I suppose. Well, anyway, yeah. since you've yeah. got to do your job and everything. You know? This used to be a movie theater. This used to be the okay. Cinema International Movie Theater. Oh. And... Uh, it took about a year to convert it into a television wow. station. So I saw some of these pictures. That's, that's, so that's like back in the day, like what the what, what they broadcast from. Like uh, the house yeah, like this is even before my time. This lower okay. half here, yeah. it was a, a little trailer, a couple of trailers put together, yeah. I guess. That was the first studio that uh, okay. WDAZ had. Where the heck was that at? It was on Demers or on uh, Dyke Avenue. Okay. And they were there for a while, and then uh, I came in uh, to the picture about 1975, okay. about a year after that uh, building was built. That was on Demers Avenue downtown, and, and we were there for uh, okay. a couple of... Uh, so then, uh, where did they, okay, from going from that small place to the big building, how the heck did that happen? I mean, like, did, like where did they get the funding and all that? To well, the station grew. I mean, okay. it's, uh, it started small, and at first there were just a couple, three, four people. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, when I joined the staff, I think there were maybe a dozen okay. on the staff, and it grew and grew until finally there was 45 wow. people or so full-time. Plus, You got a pretty big staff over here? Well, it's... it's or at least in there? <laughs> what, yeah, yes and no. I mean, uh, we've, we've gone through some cuts, too, like a lot of other people. Yeah, I don't see Charlie Johnson on anywhere. Where did he go? He's he's the uh, head of the Fargo Moorhead Convention and Visitors. Oh, okay. Because I remember last year uh, TNA Wrestling came to the Lair Center, and I remember seeing him at that one bar that's over there, the Canadian, <laughs> Canadian, you know, Canadian bar. Or whatever, yeah, Charlie's at the and, bar. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's the hotel anyway, because that's where the Lair Center is. Anyway, and I saw him there, and you know, I I thought he was going to be like the new full time anchor. Or well, he was here for about a year and a half, and then this opportunity came along. He was driving from Fargo to Grand Falls. Oh, so he didn't live here. Right? No, he didn't okay. live here. So that's pretty tough, especially in yeah. Yeah. North Dakota winters. I so. suppose, yeah, interstates and everything. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so, uh, so we, I guess we've kind of figured out question number three. Is that right? Has been a, has being an anchor man always something you wanted to do, or was there any other jobs besides being a radio DJ? Was there any other interest that you had, or what oh, you wanted to be? Well, when I was a, a kid, I wanted to be. Um, I thought I'd be a, mu 
musician. Oh, okay. I always wanted to be a musician. <laughs> and uh, I found out, you know, after a while that that requires talent. Yeah. And I didn't, you didn't have, have any at the time? Enough. No, not nearly enough. So. Okay. And when I was even younger before that, um, I wanted to be a magician. Oh, yeah. Somebody was telling me that, you, that uh, I think I Jeff magic. or whatever was saying that, that American, he was saying that uh, you do some magic or you, you were a magician or. I. I Liked it, and, and okay, I, okay. I still would like to be a magician, but I, oh, like again, was, it takes time. Like he so. was telling me though, I, maybe he was just filling us full of BS, or whatever. But he, <laughs> he said that you like on like Fridays or something like that, you go somewhere and you do magic shows or whatever. No, okay, and then no. he was filling us full of hot air. That was <laughs> yeah, that was I nice think so. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> that we knew you. <laughs> <laughs> Those front desk people at the American, I tell you, wrong. yeah, no, that's a. <laughs> Uh, so now uh, we get to uh, an interesting question. Uh, the Nulo file. How did that originate? Um, that was not my idea exactly. It, my boss at the time came to me, and it was my 25th anniversary at the station. Sure. I had 25 years, and he said, we had to do something. To celebrate. To yeah. celebrate. Yeah. But, you know, and we don't... The ulterior motive in television is always not to celebrate, but to promote something. Okay. And okay. to, you know, so we thought we would do something for maybe four weeks. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really want to do it any longer than that. I said, well, let's do four mm -hmm. of them and see if anybody knows. People got to see a new side of you. <laughs> well, Was all that what you're afraid of? Or? No, no. Okay. All along I'd been doing sort of funny stories sometimes yeah. and, and, and uh, little lighthearted stories. No, I wasn't afraid of it at okay. all. But I just thought, well, I don't have to put my name on everything. Yeah. You know, I don't have to yeah. do that. But we did. And again, my boss said, well, let's just keep it going and see yeah. what happens. Nothing happened. Yeah. Uh, this was in May, and nothing really, nobody really took notice of it till that fall, about this and, time. And when did it happen? Like what year? Um, it would have been, uh, I think, December. 1990, I believe. Oh, so that's when you first started. So the videos yeah. online are something like later on. They're the last. Oh, year. okay. Yeah, okay. The last uh, two years. So how come it's that? Uh, how come we don't re re incarnate it or like redo it or well, continue it? Because I don't so. own the station. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, it, it was it, it's a good segment though, and I know maybe sometimes things drag along, but I actually, you know, what I've been watching to to, to get a little bit of inside about who you are and everything because I see you on TV but I, I want to see a side of you that is also humorous or whatever and people would tell me you gotta check out the Dylan file. Well I found it on YouTube, your YouTube page, and that's hilarious. You know, that's good stuff. Well know? thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. short segments but they're funny. Yeah. yeah. And and again they were show closers. They were they okay were, were Friday nights the end okay, of so the show week kind of thing. end of the week. Yeah. Something to leave them uh, yeah, laughing, laughing or, or, or learning not, something because you know. some of yours was educational. Yeah. We learned about Kevin Bacon and Frosty the Snowman. Remember that one? No. You don't remember that I don't. one? I did 799 oh. of them. I don't Okay, remember. well, these are the ones that I've seen online anyway. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're comparing Kevin Bacon with a similarity to Frosty the Snowman. And you had a book that you were holding like uh, about Frosty the Snowman or like how like man has gone from like man to snowman or something like that. Mm -hmm. like a red book. It looked like uh, it had some caveman or whatever on the, like how we evolve as humans, and that they eventually turned the caveman or the person turned into a snowman. Yeah, well, I, I believe. I don't that know. I'll have to send you a link. Right? <laughs> I'll send you a link or I whatever. Yeah, yeah I, but we did. Yeah. yeah, people and and beyond <laughs> beyond that, I, I've done like uh, something like three thousand stories. Wow. We call them reporter packages, yeah. and people will come up to me and say, "Remember when you were at my house and uh -huh. we did a story about my." Ink pen collection? Yeah. No, I don't because it's yeah. yeah it's like well, any other job. You remember some things you don't remember. Well, in some of these you talk about like uh, like Sarah Palin, like how many schools did she go to or colleges did she go to, and you said five or whatever. And then you went to like that one guy from the Food Network, you know that Michael guy, or whatever, who was on the Food Network star or whatever. Uh, you went and hung out with him, made like some pie or something like that, or cake or oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, John Michael. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I so it's a lot to remember. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you, I thought you know, you you would want to remember, especially some of like you know, like some very good episodes that you did, you know, that you know, keep in your memory. You know. Oh, 
I do. I mean, I mean, we went to um, Hollywood and did. Oh. I was on General Hospital, and we did two or three Doolin files on that. Really? Yeah. And wow. uh, they gave me a line to uh -huh. read. They wrote yeah. me into the episode and stuff. And, and so that's yeah. You can't forget that. Wow. Jeez. Uh, and all, all from doing this, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you work for an ABC station. Oh, okay, because it's an ABC show. Mm -hmm. So how come you were at, like, Home Improvement or anything like that, or Full House? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, because those are in prime time. Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> the TGIF days back in the day. Dude. Okay, uh, so now let's get a little bit more personal here. Uh, we haven't gotten a little personal already. Really. Uh, what is, in your mind, since you've been uh, part of the WJC staff, the greatest story you ever had to record? Greatest Alex, story? Greatest story. That's where you got to dig in the brain and see. Well, uh, I don't know. Great. Uh, that's why I was wondering about the word. The, okay. The, the most important story we did, seriously, was the, the flood. Okay. Um, well, that's what nobody will forget. Yeah. And, and uh, that's when you find out that people are depending on you yeah. and people are watching yeah. and all of that. And, and that, you know, I always thought that the the best story that I would ever do would be something that I would spend a lot of time researching and writing and, yeah. and working on and all of that. And, and what I found out was, and a lot of us found out, is that we don't get to pick the story sometimes. Yeah. They find us, and like it or not, we have to report them. And, and it wasn't all fun by any means to report yeah. that blood, especially when you live through it. But, uh, I suppose. But that was the... Um, so what do you think would have happened if uh, the flood wouldn't have happened? What do you think? What, what What do you think '97 would have been like if the flood would have never happened? Just another year, probably. Yeah. 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 I suppose. Did you cover it all the road? You covered the Rosa flood too, didn't you? Or talk uh, about it a little bit? Or well, I was on the air then. I yeah, don't from ten think years I ago. was. Yeah. No, okay. I don't think I was there actually. But okay. we were. Our, our station was. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I don't know if this really answers another question, but. What's the worst story you ever had to report? Um, I same answer. Answer. Well, I suppose, same, huh? Kind of, in a way. Uh, See, because like, when it comes to like, the great, you figure you'd be more like, it, it, like there'd be a positive story that's like, uplifting. So I guess the flood story could be uplifting, too, in a way, because like you said, you depend on, you see how people really are. But... I, thought, I, I was just hoping for something more. <laughs> well, I mean, believe me, there are there are stories that I like which yeah. are much more yeah. uh, uplifting than, than that. Yeah. And and there are interviews that I've done, people I've talked to, yeah. people I've met, and uh, they're, they're, it's much more fun at times. I uh, suppose a serious great thing is fine, too. Cause yeah. It, I mean, it was ha what happened. And, you know, people, look, people depended on you for the source because you guys were the source. The WDAZ. I don't know how much broadcast and Fargo did, but I know you guys get a lot because it's the only really television station in town. Here. Well, and and uh, like I say, people found us uh, on. Uh, I mean, they put our signal on on different uh, cable channels and sure. things, and they saw us for the first time in Bismarck and Mandan oh, okay. and, and different places, places. You wouldn't normally be able to reach right? because people evacuated there yeah. and lived there, and yeah. they needed to see it. Uh, yeah. And and and. Uh, Midco and the other station, sure. uh, other channels were uh, nice enough to understand that and yeah. put us on at least part of the time. Well, so. that sounds cool. I mean, thank yeah. you. Well, might as well. So, okay, so pretty much the last question I have for you before we end this interview. What advice would you give any, to anyone who would like to be an anchorman or a reporter? Any young person or old person or somebody who who's always wanted to be a broadcaster? What would well, a, a couple of things. Uh, Read as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, newspaper, not just news and not just the internet, but read books. Um, I always tell, if I can get to them early enough, before they've started college, I always yeah. tell them, you know, anybody can teach you to run a camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm right> here. <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, the, the, anybody can teach you how to turn on a microphone. That's sure. It's not always easy, but it's but you can learn those things. Sure. We'll teach you those things. What we can't teach you is what to say. Yeah. And so so often, so many people get to a television station and they don't have anything to say. Sure. They need something to say. You need some background. You need to learn about history. You need to learn about politics, government, all the things that you're going to be talking about. You need to know about your area, your sure. state your country, 
you need to know about the world. And I, I always tell kids to, to learn as much as you can, and, and especially to read. That's one thing. The other thing, a uh, piece of, little piece of advice I would give is to try and get as much experience as you can, as early as you can. If you're in high school, we hire high school kids to, to crew our, our shows and to do different things. Behind the camera or something? They run camera, they run teleprompter, okay. they, they eventually run audio. Uh, and, and very often they're hired to, to later after high school and college to, to work here. And mm -hmm. they can find out by doing that sort of thing whether or not they like it without doing too much damage. That Adam guy that you have on here on your show, he seems like a young guy. Is he pretty young? They're all young. Okay. Well, the guy you talked to from Devil's Lake or whatever. Yeah, there, uh, a lot of our reporters right now are in their 20s. Oh, late okay. 20s, mid to late 20s. And, uh, huh. yeah. But we like people who have college degrees and who have backgrounds in, yeah. in communications and... Uh, um, but I mean, say like, okay, say if I wanted a job here, even though I don't have the degree, but I have lots of experience, mostly because of my radio experience, you know, I went to Northam, mm -hmm. and, and then with this YouTube thing or whatever, what would be my chances of, of getting a job here if, if I wanted to? Oh, they'd be excellent. You'd probably have to start in a, in a position that you, you know, you yeah. probably think you're you got better, better for this, better. Okay. you know, but you might not get an anchor job or, uh -huh. or uh, a reporter job right off the bat, but we would find a place for you okay. uh, doing crew work or okay. something. Oh, uh, I never see, see, I, I'm glad I asked that question because, you know, uh, even personally, you were off the YouTube thing, I just, you know, I've always had a love of broadcasting. Yeah. I, I grew up pretty much with the love of broadcasting. Listen to the, the days of Cool One Hundred Point Three or KSNR or with the the Jim Zippo show, you know, <laughs> and you know I've always just you know always wondered what what it takes, you know, if somebody doesn't have the degree, what it takes to get in something like this. You know? Well, I'm talking, you know, about about news particularly because yeah. that's what I know. Yeah. Uh, there are there are other people who who uh, uh, I always uh, always think of uh, Peter Jennings. Yeah. The late great Peter Jennings. The late didn't finish high school. Oh, he did not finish high school, um, and and I'm sure there's other examples, yeah. you know. But but I always think of him. He was as smart as they come, yeah. and as as well read as they come, yeah. and all of that. But he was self-taught, and and there's that to be said too. So how did he get? Did he go? Well, if he didn't finish high school, did he? Not go to college, or he did not go to college. So uh, he just got a job. He got a job. He was he's Canadian. He got a okay. job in Canadian broadcasting. Okay. I think his father was in broadcasting and had maybe some uh, connections. Some probably, huh? But you don't last very long if you don't have the goods. Yeah. And and uh, so I always think about him. You know, okay. when I boast yeah. about everybody having degrees at our station, okay. it's, it doesn't have to be that way. Oh, oh cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time for your day. It is fun. I mean, you know, I learned a lot about you. You learned a little bit about me. And, and I hope the viewers at home, you know, especially the ones that are local that are even on Facebook, you know, you know this guy. You know, yeah. He's, he's a local celebrity. You know? <laughs> he's a legend, you know. Terry Doolum. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you.